Hey everyone, welcome to my top six favourite magic editions of all time. Now, how can I tell you all about my top six? Well, I actually am a magician. I've been performing magic for the past 20 plus years and I've been doing it professionally for the past five years, maybe even longer. And I was on Britain's Got Talent back in 2020 where I got yeses through to the next round. But unfortunately, that was the year of the pandemic and didn't get to make the semi-final. But this is me here. Are you ready? Three, two, one. So yes, I was, as I say, on Britain's Got Talent back in 2020, which means I know how it feels to audition on Britain's Got Talent from first-hand experience. I have been there and I've done it. And I also know a lot about magic. So most of the auditions that you're going to see today, I actually know how they all work. However, I'm going to talk about how they made me feel in the moment. Some of them I know but I'm not basing it on them being my friend. I'm basing it on how I made, they made me feel and many other factors. So we're going to jump straight in at number six and we're going to go straight in with David Penn. David Penn had an addition. So David Penn had an addition many years ago back when we had a slightly different judging panel. We had David, um, there was no David Williams. There was no uh, Simon Cowell at this point. We had um, the Hoff. David Hoffman, we had Michael McIntyre, and we also had Amanda Holdham. David? And I'm Karen. What's the relationship between you two? We are magic partners. So there we go. This is David. David is very well known in the magic world, but we're going to go straight into the act here. So David gets put inside this box right here. As you can see, David's up here in the big box, and Karen is at the bottom. Then David goes in, but his hand is removed. His hand is outside the box the whole time. And then you get to see what happens. Now. Now, you can tell, obviously, they got an amazing reaction for that, and there's complete understandable. The reason why they're at number six for myself is because of two reasons. One, fantastic trick, amazing trick. It's an amazing illusion. I'm not the world's biggest fan of illusions, but that is probably one of the best I have seen for a box-style effect. I know David personally now. We've spoke a few times on occasions, and I've always admired his work. He's very well known in the magic community. But the reason why he made number six, which is still great to make the list, is one, it's so fast. It's over and done with like that. It's an amazing thing. And that's the kind of magic I love performing when I do close-up. It has to be bang, 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 bang. I would like to have seen two or three different things. And finally, it's just because it's an illusion. That is the only other reason why it's made number six. However, David, you are an amazing magician. I respect you massively. And from a magician's point of view, that was absolutely fantastic, very fast, and well-deserved to be in the top six. Now, before we move on to our next one, there is many magicians that definitely deserve to be on the audition thing. I've just narrowed it down to the top six on how they made me feel. But I will also make a video on semi-finals and finals, Americas, and other different Got Talents also. So please make sure that you subscribe for more magic content along the way. But there's people like Richard Jones, who hasn't made this list, or Jamie, Jamie um, who came second on um, Britain's Got Talent and lost out to Ashley and Pudsey. lost to a dog. However, Jamie Raven, when he was on the show, he was fantastic. Nothing against him. It was just um, I preferred his final compared to what he done in addition. Let's go on to our second uh, or in our fifth place and fifth place for me. Go, my little here. boy Dylan told me that he... I'm going to pause it just now but this is James and Dylan. James and Dylan were on Britain's Got Talent the same time, the exact same day as I auditioned. So this is James here. James is the dad of Dylan and I'm not the biggest fan of stories like, like bad sad stories that have happened in your life. I prefer sentimental magic, and this is what that is. I, I don't want to hear all the sob stories, which obviously it makes good TV. I want to hear some good magic and also some sentimental thing. So they based, they based this entire edition on father and son. So obviously they've got James and Dylan. This is James' the dad, and you're going to see Dylan in a second, the son. And they're talking about Simon and his son, Eric. So let's move forward to when he picks a card and writes Eric on it. then. He makes the card vanish. 
Oops, I've just jumped back. Let's go forward. There we go. It's gone. Basic card patch. Take a look. Simon's card has completely disappeared. Wow. Simon! Simon! It's in here. No. My name is Dylan Piper, and that's my dad. Before we came here tonight, he gave me his wallet. And inside this wallet is something impossible. Simon, this wallet was inside Dylan's... Now, first of all, just before we get to the, this little finale, this is one of the uh, three or four different effects that they actually perform throughout this edition. But imagine that in their eyes, as the judges, obviously I'm looking at it as a magician's eyes. If you're a magician watching this, you're looking at it as a magician's eyes. Simon has signed a card, written his son's name on it, but had the opportunity to write any name in the world. He writes his son's name on it, the card vanishes in his hands and transports to the other side of the room to an audience member's pocket, not knowing at that moment that that was his son until now. ...pocket before you picked your card. And that's what makes this so impossible. Because inside this wallet, there is another wallet. And inside this wallet, there is a zip. Now, the only way in is if I undo this zip. Yep. And inside is a folded up playing card. Take a look and show everyone. No way. Oh, oh my, my God. Now, I said from the very start, I am going to be judging on how it made me feel. Now, I was actually there when they'd done this edition. And James and Dylan are two of the kindest, nicest, most polite people I've ever met. Amazing human beings. And when we were backstage, they could not have been more warming and made it a better experience for myself. So first of all, that definitely maybe played a slight factor in it. Two, the reactions. You can hear the no way. Oh, my goodness. How crazy is that? And I like about how they make you feel. For example, if we put back on um, my position, which is here, we're going to go right away to the reaction. Our goal with this one was to make the judges scared. You can tell here. Now, Deck, this instruction is for you. This time, I Amanda. Perfect. God. Now, we're going to do the same again. When I get to one, that judge is going to pull as hard as possible on that piece of string. Basically, one of the pieces of string is tied to the fishing hook. So I'm just going to jump to when they freak out. Let's have a look. There we go. For each other's ears. Have a chat. So you can tell you're getting a lot of reaction from the judges. That's all it was. It wasn't to show you too much. And that's what they're doing. They're going for the sentimental. With David Penn with the box illusion, they're going for that bang. Wow. We were going for the no way. Getting the judges freaking out. With Britain's Got Talent, obviously, uh, there is a bit more to what you see. So obviously the, the goal for me wasn't actually to be performing that exact effect. However, it didn't work out that way. And that is what they wanted to see. So that's what I ended up doing. But let's move on to place number four. We've done six, we've done five. On to number four and... Something I don't like. Okay. An egg. An egg? This is Ben Hart. I'm going to actually mute this and just keep talking. Um, ben Hart is a magician that I've just went and watched the stage show. At this time, I didn't know who he was. Um, or I did know who he was. I'd seen him in person. However, I've never... I didn't know him as like a friend. Now I can class him as a friend. Was backstage with him just recently at his stage show that he just performed. Now Ben, the reason why he's only in fourth place and shouldn't he probably should be in first place is because he does a close up effect which I love and I love Ben's close up magic and then he does a big stage illusion and I'm just not the biggest fan of the stage illusions. Not saying anything against it, it's just not my style. But this routine, Ben actually performed to me and around about one to two hundred people back just before it went live. This went live on. Uh, Britain's Got Talent. I didn't know he was doing Britain's Got Talent, um, but this went live in the May. But in the January, he actually performed this to between one and 200 magicians and his jaws dropped. So Simon's just picked the word egg out of all these different words he could have chosen. He puts a piece of paper on the fan and he performed this and all the magicians jaws dropped. This is confetti getting heavier. And if you listen, you may be able to hear it. And I have to visualize it changing form. Now you can probably see that that egg 
or that piece of paper is now transforming into an egg, right? Like literally a piece of paper that Simon picked on the, the, the fan, hitting it up in the air, turns into an egg, and then he crack the egg. Like, again, I'm a magician. And if you're a magician at home watching this, right, get, you get it. There might be a method behind the madness. You know there's methods. But imagine how that moment is going to make you feel. And that's what I'm going for for these additions. We've got six, five, and four. And all three that we've already went through, they've, hit, they've made me feel something. They've made me feel happy. They've made me feel, wow, that was fast. They've made me feel sentimental. So the next one that is coming in in third place. People are going to say I'm a bit biased with this one. But my best friend is in third place. So one of my best friends was on Britain's Got Talent in 2023. Um, we were chatting about it from 2020. From the start of lockdown, we were on Zoom calls, phone calls, and we were discussing what his, what his audition would look like, which meant I did have a small help in it. Not massive, but we were discussing it, and then he took it to the next level. The reason for it is we had some ideas. Lewis here is a Lewis here is a musician and a magician. So he's known as the singing magician, and he does the cruise ships. He does um, loads of stage shows, corporates. Used to do like the wedding side of things, which is what I do um, every single week. Lots of them. But this is Lewis here. Now Lewis, obviously, he's got the pressure that I had standing on that stage, uh, looking forward to it. But there was a routine that I saw years ago in The Illusionist, and it's where they would make a piano appear. And we started discussing that method. After we'd discussed that, Lewis somehow managed to come up with this, and it was all over the TV. Look at that moment. Imagine that again, being in the audience. I wish I was there at the time. He's sitting playing the piano and he just makes it vanish. Mwah. That's all I can say to that. That is just phenomenal. Um, now making a lady appear, as you can see. Um, it's just mental. It's absolutely crazy. And why I loved his addition so much is because I saw how hard he worked at it. I saw the three years in preparation for it. I saw the the endless hours of work that he put into it, all for that three minute moment on TV. So Lewis, well done. You've got position three. I think if I gave you any more than position three, there'd be people asking questions considering you're one of my best mates, but you know how much I respect the magic you do. So yeah, well done. Now we're going into position number two. And that here, Nice to meet you, Killian. How old are you and where are you from? I'm... Killian is a 13-year-old magician. He went on stage just like other magicians such as Rylan Petty, Izzy Simpson, another Irish magician, which I've just forgot his name, who done a show with Matt Franco over in Las Vegas. These magicians are taking over. People are worried about how magic's going to be in 10 years' time. If you see these guys, you should not be worried because this guy's 13 years old. He talks about how he's got autism. Yeah, that might be one of these stories I was talking about. But this guy's magic is amazing. Being 13 years old, hitting hard like this, he's funny. Now watch this. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> you don't mess around, do you? Uh, seven of diamonds. Wrong. Now at this point, they're laughing, they find it funny. And if you're a 
42 years old, you probably wouldn't get away with that. But this is it here. His hand goes through that hole. He turns over the card and pulls the sticker off with no hole, which he just put his hand through the card. Like, what? Now, obviously, being a magician, yes, we understand what's going on here. But to the audience's perspective, that is a what moment. Let's move further forward. He pours milk into a cup. If we fast forward a few seconds, that cup, well, a few seconds, that cup disappears. Watch closely. The cup completely disappears. It is absolutely... This guy just knows exactly what he's doing. He's only 13 years old, and I can't rate him highly enough. I've actually got to meet him once at um, a magic convention. At the end of the day, you're forgetting they're still just kids. He's been signed up with one of the best agencies in the UK who are going to make him a superstar. So, Killian, even like when we chat about Izzy Simpson, we chat about Rylan Petty, these are kids still going to primary and high school, going out there and being on the world stage and putting in the best performances ever, being scripted because they've got an amazing group of people around them, well done yous. But I've said throughout this entire thing, it's all about how it makes me feel. I remember the moment I watched it the first time and then how I watch it now. And with when I watched Killian, I was thinking, wow, what an amazing young guy. He's managed to do all these moments that are just incredible. But for a first place act, I think... Now, bear in mind, I wanted to quickly tell you something. You should probably subscribe just now because if you subscribe, you're going to get to see my semi-final one. And when we chat about the semi-finals, my favourite performance on a Got Talent history is in that. Like, I mean, overall. But just for auditions on Britain's Got Talent, if I watched this edition every single day, I think I would still laugh. My favourite magic to watch as a hobby or to watch in person or go and see live is comedy magic. There's a magician called Matt King in Las Vegas and potentially one of my favourite entertainers of all time. His friend Nick DeFat is also a magician that performs and he's now started teaching magicians. And For me, that's fantastic. There's a UK-based magician called Tom Wright and I just laugh at all his things as well. And then there's this guy. The guy that everybody thought would be annoying. Amazing. Now, uh, because uh, I've only got a minute, I'm going to give this a big build-up in the hope that everyone claps really loudly and then all the ladies take off their bras and throw them in my face. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you can probably tell, the judges at the very start when they introduced themselves were like, this guy's going to be annoying. Simon, you can tell just by his, his reaction there, he's like, nah. And then he starts to prove he's quite How good. About a <laughs> Rachel, I'm an AG. <laughs> <laughs> At that moment, he's just proven that he is not a magician. But what I love most about this is he's about to perform a classic in magic. A magician's trick that, if you're a magician, the chances are you know what's going to happen here. But he has an entire theatre in the palm of his hands because he's done such a good job. That's literally it. Watch this. So he's obviously doing a bit of acting. Basically, he takes salt, as you can see, a handful of salt, and he makes it vanish. Watch one, two, three, vanish. And then we'll go back just a little bit. He makes it appear. I love this. Love it, love, love it. Now, while we continue, this is it. This is the moment that I wanted to talk about. This is... I look at... I look at moments that I will never forget. Watching TV, watching Got Talent, watching live. Matt, I've met in person since his audition. And he's like how he is on stage, that crazy, enthusiastic, energetic person all the time. But what you're about to see is the moment where someone that's working hard, trying their best, 
doing comedy clubs, doing this for at magic bars, trying to make a living, get given a moment. And this is it here. This is the moment that Ant and Dick potentially changes life. <laughs> I don't think I've ever, ever watched that edition and not got shivers down my spine. And literally there, again, I just watched it and got shivers down my spine because I know that was a moment that he will never forget. That's a moment that's going to change his life. And that's a moment that he can go to his kids, his grandkids, to anybody in his family and be proud of because he's just managed to do that. Guys, that is my top six. We've narrowed it down from a, a stage illusion by David Penn. We've gotten on to uh, James and Dylan, who are a fantastic double act, on the same day as myself. Father and son, absolutely brilliant. We also had Ben Hart, who performed the most amazing close-up audition of all time. However, obviously went on to a stage illusion, which was fantastic, just not my style. But when you see Ben in the semi-final and final and any other performance and his stage show, he deserved... He deserves to be like one of the best magicians in the world, which he is. Then we moved on to uh, Lewis, one of my best friends in magic, but I got to see what he's done. Then we moved on to, um, I've, I've lost track, with Killian, who, 13-year-old, a smash, an inspiration to any young magician, any adult magician. And then finally moved on to Matt Edwards, potentially my favourite audition of all time through All Got Talents. Well done. Thank you for making my list. If you enjoyed this video, I am currently creating lots of them. I'm doing semi-finals, we're doing finals, we're doing all Got Talent, and then it'll be my top moments in Got Talent history. That is all Got Talent around the world, all together in one. But if you enjoyed that, my name's Cameron Young. I'm a professional magician. I've been on Britain's Got Talent. I've been on Penn and Teller Fool Us, and now I'm on YouTube. So please subscribe. Help me make this journey work. And I will see you all in the next video. Is that what you're supposed to say? Subscribe!